After more than two decades of uninterrupted rule, is the pendulum swinging the other way in Turkey? President Recep Tayyip Erdogan threw all the weight of his AKP party to uh, behind uh, unseating Istanbul's charismatic mayor Ekrem Imamoglu. Instead, the possible presidential contender extended his gains in Sunday's local elections, this in the country's largest city. Despite media and courts stacked against the opposition, the ruling party lost the country's five biggest cities, Erdogan conceding on the night, hinting that heads might roll inside his party. We'll ask what's changed in the 11 months since he handily won re-election. Uh, we'll ask about the divide between urban and rural areas and what's next for Turkey's democracy. Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at Turkey's local elections. Our panel is in Istanbul. Political scientist Selim Nasi, thank you so much for joining us. You're visiting fellow at the London School of Economics. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yusuf Arim is editor at large for TRT World. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Francois. France 24 correspondent Jasper Mortimer uh, will be with us uh, shortly. Your reactions on the hashtag F24 debate, not just Ankara and Istanbul, all of Turkey's five biggest cities either voting out the AKP or re electing. Uh, the opposition, the latest tally has the opposition uh, uh, the, uh, winning, or the, rather the ruling AKP winning in 35 of uh, 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 81, or rather 24 of uh, 81 provincial capitals, uh, 35 for the opposition. So quite different uh, 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 landscape from the last time around. Uh, turnout was down by nine points uh, on last year's general election leading pollsters to assume that many Erdogan supporters stayed home and the president himself to concede that Turkey is, quote, at a turning point. We will open-heartedly analyze the results within our party and make our self-criticism boldly. However, we will not disrespect our nation's decision in any way. We will avoid being stubborn, acting against the national will, and questioning the judgment of our nation. Selin Nasi, what was the deciding factor in this election? There are a, lot, a number of factors, indeed. Uh, first of all, uh, Imam Oğlu uh, performed very well as a, as a mayor, as a, and ran a very successful uh, campaign uh, throughout the process. Um, he, he was a very energetic and... Um, charismatic leader. Uh, the fact that he uh, succeeded in defeating Erdogan twice uh, in the previous elections uh, made him a formidable, uh, formidable, formidable uh, leader uh, to challenge Erdogan in the, in the presidential elections in uh, 2028. So uh, this, um, and, and also um, the AKP made some tactical uh, mistakes in the campaign, uh, picking the wrong candidates, uh, especially in Istanbul. Um, and, and Erdogan uh, ran a campaign as if his name was on the ballot. So he turned the election, local elections, into a referendum uh, on his uh, leadership and, uh, and, and his leadership under the presidential uh, system. And so uh, this, I think, backfired uh, because the voters, uh, in a way, um, punished Erdogan, uh, from my perspective, uh, and the ruling party for his uh, handling of the economy. Um, and uh, I think uh, economic uh, concerns uh, overweighed identity issues this time. So that is why we see a change. Uh, if you uh, ask me what changed uh, since, uh, uh, since uh, elections in uh, May 2023, I think the economy has been deteriorating and the AKP under Erdogan has failed to reverse uh, the tide. F failed to, to reverse the tide. Yeah, many saying it's not ideology, but 60% inflation that is seen as the driving force behind the result. Let's listen to one Istanbul resident who's digesting the news this Monday. Turkey has woken up. Two years ago, my rent was 1,800 Turkish liras. Now I pay 12,000. I live by myself and I have two kids. How do I make ends meet? Of course, Yusuf Erin, inflation was high last year. What's changed? Uh, there has been many changes, actually. Last year, when we look at the political landscape, 
you had earthquake recovery, and you also had national security issues. And uh, uh, these two concerns, uh, no one wanted to see a change at the top. Uh, people who were uh, unhappy with the economy put the economy on the back burner because of national security concerns and earthquake recovery. And they gave Erdogan the vote of confidence. But we've seen earthquake recovery quite successful with the rebuilding. Uh, national security concerns have greatly eased right now. So the economy has become a much greater issue. And when we're seeing the results from these local elections, the candidates who've won, the candidates who've lost, uh, many of them weren't judged on their platforms as candidates, whether it's going to be uh, urbanization or how to deal with migrants or local jobs. It was, uh, as Sidin said, the economy was the top issue, and that's not a local issue. That's a federal issue. So, uh, yes, it is quite a stunning result. Uh, nobody was expecting uh, such a comfortable victory for the CHP in Ankara and Istanbul. That was surprising. I thought that the CHP was going to do well in both cities. I thought they were going to win in both cities, but I was quite surprised by the margin of victory. But when we look at the data, it's not a doomsday scenario, as many people are talking about. Uh, when, with the valid votes from the 2019 to the 2024 election are both in the 46 million range. So there aren't that uh, there aren't more valid votes. We're seeing four about 4.2 million, I think, less uh, AK party votes and three million more CHP votes. So yes, the CHP won. Yes, the opposition won. But this is more the AK party lost this election. Uh, we're also seeing one million new voters. And uh, while we don't have the data, one can assume at these voter turnouts and the turnaround from the previous election. The CHP did a lot better job of reaching out to the uh, newer, younger voters than the AK party has. So as the Turkish president said, yes, this is a turning point, but we're going to take lessons away from this. So there's four years till the next election. I highly doubt there's going to be an early election because the recent election had just been finished. So Erdogan's in the first year of his mandate. Four years is more than enough time for the Turkish president to be able to revamp uh, uh, party and uh, his He's done this before. The AK party has had dips in votes and been able to recover in elections in the past. So this isn't new territory for him. All right. We're, we're now joined by France 24 correspondent Jasper Mortimer. Yeah, the, the, the incumbent president has, has uh, suffered uh, uh, setbacks in the past. But Jasper, not on this scale. That is correct. Look, the interesting thing about this election is that yesterday, Erdogan said this could be the start of a new era for Turkey, the start of a new century. And what he was talking about was his pledge to change the constitution. And it was feared that he would change the constitution to allow him to run again in 2028 and to remove the remaining elements of judicial independence. In other words, to consolidate his power. Yesterday evening, uh, he said, we have made mistakes. This is a turning point. We will look with courage at our deficiencies and so on. He ate humble pie. And it is very exceptional for President Erdogan to eat humble pie. Now, the question is, will he steamroller ahead with his plans to change the Constitution in favor of consolidating his own power? Or will he take this election as a shock as the, the three biggest cities in the country, Istanbul, Ankara and Izmir, who together amount to nearly a third of the population, saying, no, we don't want your constitutional plans. This election was a referendum on Erdogan. That's quite clear. Erdogan dominates the politics of this country. But it was also, interestingly, an election on issues. I agree with the pre pre previous speaker. You know, whereas um, uh, a year ago, uh, people voted for Erdogan, they identified with him, and they weren't quite sure of the opposition uh, candidate who was challenging him for the presidency. Uh, uh, yesterday, they voted according to the economy. They voted according to... Uh, issues like pensions, inflation, and so on. Um, uh, one of the themes of this election, 
uh, Yeni Refa Party, the new welfare party, sprang out of nowhere and captured two provinces, Yozgat and Shanlufa. And it, where it didn't win, it ate into the AK Party's votes. And it did so not by playing the Islamic card, which it could have, it is an Islamic group, it did so by um, playing populist politics. And its messages were twofold. One, increase pensions. It pointed out that the lowest pension was underneath the minimum wage, and it pledged to double the lowest pension. Uh, and it also said, stop trade with Israel. And it shocked a lot of Turks uh, when the Turkish Statistical Institute uh, revealed that Turkey had increased its trade with Israel since the Israeli-Hamas war began in October. Uh, Turks uh, I, uh, uh, are very much in support of Palestinians, and they were angered by that. And Yeni, uh, the new welfare party, mobilized voters by saying, we would place a trade embargo on Israel immediately. And what is uh, Erdogan's uh, next move? Even his uh, home turf in Istanbul's conservative Uskudar district broke ranks and voted for the opposition. An opposition that, uh, as uh, Selin was saying at the outset, is led by an Ekrem Mimamolu seen as a serious presidential contender. Oliver Farry has more. It was a triumphant re-election for Ekrem Imamoglu and the mayor of Istanbul was adamant it was the beginning of a new chapter for Turkey. The nation itself gives the order and the instructions, not just one person. Officials receive instructions from the nation. The period of one-man rule is over as of today. It is done. The republic and democracy go full speed ahead from now on. After breaking the ruling AK party's 25-year hold on Istanbul City Hall in 2018, Imamoglu has won over many voters in Turkey's largest city, with a number of initiatives ranging from social to environmental. He has also avoided blame for Turkey's rampant inflation. His pledges to tackle Istanbul's perennial traffic problems and make buildings earthquake-proof hint at potential presidential ambitions. And Imamoglu being a practicing Muslim could be vital in a country where wide tracts of the population continue to be ill at ease with the state's official secularism. But Imamoglu is not a foregone conclusion as a future challenger to Recep Tayyip Erdogan. His fellow party member Mansour Yawash, mayor of Ankara, was also comfortably re-elected. Polls had given Yawash as the strongest challenger in last May's presidential election before the opposition settled on the ultimately unsuccessful compromise candidate, Kemal Kilic Tarolu. Another compromise will need to be struck for either man to run for the top job in 2028. So this is where we now go into uh, uncharted territory, Selin Nasi, because this is the last election officially uh, unless, as Yusuf was saying earlier, there's, an, uh, there's a snap election for a while. And what's going to happen? Because officially the president is term limited. And as we saw, there's more than one name being bandied about for leader of the opposition. Yes, uh, a number of scenarios are being outlined. From my perspective, competition will certainly get tougher. Uh, Erdogan delivered uh, almost a gracious balcony speech last night, acknowledging uh, the electoral setback. Uh, but he also pledged to correct mistakes. Now is the moment for the AK Party uh, for self-reflection. The next stage will uh, inc involve uh, adoption of fresh strategies to reverse the current situation. Uh, in my view, Erdogan is very likely to utilize all kinds of tools to eliminate and weaken his, his rival, Ekrem Emanuel. Uh, remember, there is a court verdict which sentenced Emanuel to uh, over two years in prison. Uh, with a ban from politics. We may see some developments uh, on that front, but it may also easily backfire. Erdogan may uh, end up um, mobilizing voters around Imam Oli even further out of the sympathy for the oppressed or sympathy for the victim. And it wouldn't bode well for the country's image uh, and international standing either. It would put Turkey in the same league uh, with countries like Russia. Uh, there are also some concerns that Erdogan may play the nationalist card, uh, potentially leading to a recurrence of events similar to uh, those following the 2015 elections. 
Um, back then, uh, the Ak Party uh, succeeded in driving a wedge between uh, the pro-Kurdish HDP and the opposition parties. Um, but um, given the preparations to launch a, a, a cross-border operation into Iraq, it sounds plausible uh, at first glance. But um, I don't think we would see the same uh, events, the same scenario repeating. Uh, first of all, the ruling uh, party's policy toward uh, pro-Kurdish uh, pro -Kurdish party has been in place for quite a while. Uh, the government's policy of ousting uh, elected mayors from office and appointing uh, state appointees uh, in their positions over their alleged ties to the outlawed PKK um, has indeed um, pushed Kurdish voters away from the AK party to converge them around uh, alternative parties. Uh, this time around, for example, in the local elections, we saw that the pro-Kurdish Dem Party, formerly known, known as the HDP, fielded its own candidates uh, and ran its own campaign. Uh, but um, Kurdish votes voted strategically, and this was one of the factors which tilted the balance uh, against the AKP, in addition to the rise of uh, the new welfare party with Jesper mentioned. So I think it won't create the desirable outcome for, the, uh, for, for Erdogan. Secondly, uh, political instability uh, in the country has the potential to only exacerbate uh, the economic problems even further. And thirdly, Erdogan is not getting any younger. Uh, he needs to prepare an heir to take over uh, leadership. And if he needs, if he heeds the message con the voters conveyed at the ballot box, he would ideally work towards um, de-escalating political polarization in Turkish society and and, and concentrate on fixing the economy instead. So from my perspective, local elections mark the beginning of a new chapter in Turkish politics. I expect to see a reconfiguration of political parties in the opposition in Turkish, especially in the opposition in Turkish politics. Mm. And seeing uh, the AKPs, because seeing the AKPs decline in pol uh, popularity may push other parties, uh, uh, partners of AKP, uh, to find alternatives, we may see new parties emerging or new coalitions uh, emerging. So it is going to be a very exciting and very interesting period to watch. All right, to lots see. to unpack there. Uh, let's begin with uh, what you were saying about uh, the uh, uh, Kurdish vote. Celebrations were held Sunday night in places like Diyarbakir, the pro-Kurdish uh, Dem Party, uh, winning there and elsewhere in the southeast. And, you know, uh, Yusuf Arim, there's the question uh, whether those candidates will be again barred for alleged ties to separatist uh, uh, militants. Uh, is it just going to be a repeat of the past? Well, that, that depends on the candidates and that depends on their relationship uh, with outlawed parties. I mean, again, we can't know or we can't speak in advance. But uh, uh, unless there's ties that would uh, lead a prosecutor to open such a case and take it to court, uh, I see no problem with the elected candidates' ruling. So, again, and, that, and, and that on the, depends and on, on the, the same person. Score, on the same score, Yusuf, do you see, for instance, this sort of Damocles that hangs over the mayor of Istanbul, uh, Ekrem Imamoglu, uh, over this uh, uh, charge of insulting uh, the electoral uh, board a few years back? Is that going to stay? Is it going to still be there, hovering just in case? Uh, I don't think so, because I don't think any that... I don't think that case or moving to prosecute against Ekrem Imamoglu would uh, politically, I mean, if this is politically motivated, as you're insinuating, I don't think it's going to politically win any one point, any points. And uh, besides heading into 2028 elections, I think Mansur Yavash is a much better candidate and a more dangerous candidate for AK Party than Ekrem Imamoglu is because of his nationalist, uh, uh, nationalist background. He has the greater potential to be able to take votes away from an AK party candidate. So I think Ekrem Imamoglu would probably be a preferred candidate for many people in AK party as an opponent uh, versus Mansur Yavash. So uh, when the CHP is making its own calculations, they actually have three candidates. They also have the chairman of the CHP, the current chairman of the CHP, Özgür Oza. So it's going to be a lot of infighting amongst them. And being a new chairman, he doesn't have the same power the previous chairman Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu had to be able to uh, tell one candidate to sit on the bench, or signal another candidate as a presidential uh, hopeful, or he himself say, you know what, I'm going to be the candidate as the chairman. So 
there's there's four years down the road. A lot's going to change and a lot's going to be forgotten. I think this election success will be forgotten by then. And the new dynamics that uh, develop over these next four years are going to be very important. It's also the other opposition parties and the other uh, minor parties, what they're going to do as well. Yeni Den uh, Refa party got 6% of the vote. That is tremendous. Now, about 3.5% of that vote, I believe, is in the AK party vote. So having the AK party vote leave, but not cross to the left wing, stay inside the right spectrum, is very promising for AK party. So that's a vote they can either win back or continue to have in a broader election alliance. Uh, when we look at E party, they've self imploded. That's very damaging for the opposition. And they're most likely going to have a new leader. Will that new leader want to stay with the opposition or will that new leader want to shift uh, towards the Ak party for an alliance? These are all going to be very t telling in 2028. So there could be a, sp a splintering of, of the opposition. Uh, Jasper Mortimer, um, reporting the last few days uh, in Istanbul, the largest metropolis uh, uh, in, in Turkey. Um, is this local election showing that it's more than ever the city versus the country in Turkey, that uh, the rural areas uh, and with people moving to the city and the population becoming younger, that Turkey is changing? I, I, I think you're onto something there, uh, Francois. Um, if you look at the map uh, of uh, Turkey, uh, where um, CHP, the Republican People's Party, the largest opposition party, won, and where um, uh, AK Party won, for the first time you see more red for the opposition than you see yellow for the AK Party. And the red of the opposition tends to be in the coastal areas, <laughs> the areas of the big cities. Uh, down in the southeast, it's all purple for the uh, Kurdish party. Um, but uh, last night, uh, I, I, uh, on the metro train I came back on, it was crowded with young people, uh, uh, supporters of the opposition, singing Ataturkist songs. One of them said to me, you know, you must excuse us for going so crazy, even inside the metro carriages. But we've been waiting for this victory for 10 years. Um, one thing I'd like to highlight is um, the Kurds not only won the southeast, but as Selim was saying, they proved themselves to be an important political player. Kurds are 10 percent of Istanbul's population, but only 2% of them voted for the Kurdish candidate for mayor of Istanbul. The other 8% of them voted for Ekrem Imamoglu, and Ekrem Imamoglu reached out to the Kurds. He published some of his propaganda in the Kurdish language. That is something that Erdogan and the AK party could never do. Uh, so um, this is one of the trends of uh, the election, the rise of the small party, new welfare party and uh, the Kurdish party managing to influence, uh, not actually win uh, in the big cities, but influence how the winners behave themselves. One last thing, uh, Francois, before I say goodbye to you is that, you know, for, I don't know, 10, 15 years now, I've been talking to you uh, about the lurch uh, to authoritarianism under the Erdogan government. We were talking about how, um, after the previous local elections, Erdogan uh, fired uh, the elected leaders of southeastern towns and replaced them with uh, appointed trustees, appointed by Ankara. I knew one of those fired mayors. He was the co-mayor of uh, Diyarbakir. I don't believe for one moment uh, that he had any terrorist connections. He was a, he was a, an, a Kurdish nationalist uh, and a surgeon. He certainly was not involved in terrorism. Uh, his, his being thrown out of office was a political move. Um, now, what struck me about last night's elections is that despite Turkey's authoritarian lurch, we still have a significant 
element of democracy. We can still conduct elections that uh, produce surprises, that shock the man that runs this country. And that says something very good about Turkey. And the consensus on this panel is that there are more surprises to come. Jasper Mortimer, I want to thank you. I want to thank as well Selin Nasi, Yusuf Aram for being with us from Istanbul. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.